All right, you guys, so today is gonna be a little bit different. I'm super excited because this week, Volkswagen USA has actually handed me the keys to the all new Volkswagen Arteon. But this isn't going to be a normal review. This is a road trip review. So I'm driving this thing over 2,000 miles for the next week. So this review is gonna be a little bit different. It's not gonna be super organized, so I do apologize for that. But hopefully you guys can still get a good perspective on what it's like to spend a week with the new Volkswagen Arteon. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so I've been driving about 135, 140 miles so far and you guys are not going to believe this part. I know I'm starting this off right with some of the best things, but 132.9 miles right now, I've been averaging 41.5 miles per gallon. That is insane. The sticker on this says that this can get a maximum of 27 miles per gallon on the highway, and I have more than exceeded that. And I've been driving normally, we've been going like 70, 75, miles an hour and we're driving from Benbrook, Texas to um, Columbus, Ohio. So uh, that's pretty insane and once again I still have a long way to go. We still have about another 800 miles to drive but so far that is absolutely insane and if I go to my range right now it's telling me I have about 530 miles of range left and I'm not even at a quarter of a tank yet used. So just wanna say right off the bat, that's pretty insane. Uh, driving impressions are really good. It's just silky smooth on the highway. The sound deadening in here is pretty good. It's not the quietest thing, but it is decently quiet. It's quiet enough for like 80% of people, so that's really good. Uh, you do have Apple CarPlay on here. Um, this doesn't have the upgraded audio system. I really wish it did because on a long trip like this, you wanna to listen to music, do things like that. So. It's not bad, it's just I'm very curious to see what the upgraded sound system would have sounded like. Other than that, the steering feel is fantastic. Um, it rides really smooth. Since it's such a low sedan, I thought it would have a little bit harsher, a little bit bumpier of a ride, and it just glides. It really does just glide. Uh, the adaptive cruise control is working very, very well. Um, and it'll get up and go really good. Um, as a matter of fact, let's see here. I'm going to switch driving modes real fast. I'm going to put it into sport mode and I'm just going to all the way down. My wife is recording so if the camera moves, I'm sorry honey. So it'll get up and go pretty quick. Uh, it's not bad at all. And yeah, it's just, it's a really good riding vehicle. I'm very impressed. You know, once again, you got to remember, this is a German built vehicle. So it's built for stuff like this. It's built for the Autobahn. It's built for everything in Germany. And so the fact that it rides and just glides so smooth on these long, long distance uh, trips is really no surprise for me. The biggest surprise though is that fuel economy. It is incredible. So with that being said, I'm gonna keep driving and I'll update you guys as we go along. All right, so I just filled up at a gas station here in Arkansas, and it looks like on a full tank, we have 595 miles. That is absolutely insane. I cannot believe that. Now, this does have a 17.4 gallon fuel tank, so that is a big fuel tank for a sedan. So that's very large. Uh, also with it being efficient, those two in combination equates to having incredible range out of this vehicle. So if you do plan on taking road trips or anything like that, you can get very, very far before you have to fill up. I mean, almost 600 miles, that's pretty incredible. But let's go ahead and get back on the road. Okay, so it is now nighttime. I think we've been driving for like 10 hours, 11 hours, something like that. Um, surprisingly, I'm not like physically tired. So the Arteon is an extremely comfortable car. You know, like I said, built for the Autobahn, so because of that, driving on the highway, so smooth, and I've already explained that, you guys get the point. Uh, now it is 
nighttime and it is a really nice cabin. Everything's really well lit up. Uh, I love the digital gauge cluster. You've got a little bit of ambient lighting going through here. And whenever you're driving, the cabin looks really nice. Uh, the footwells are well illuminated and I love well illuminated footwells. It actually brightens up the cabin a lot more. I've been in plenty of cars that have tons of ambient lighting on the dash, on the doors, but without the foot lighting, it really keeps the interior a little bit darker. And yeah, I just love having good, bright footwell lighting. I think it's really good in this vehicle. Um, it drives really well. It drives a little bit smoother and I feel like it drives more efficiently at night. Then again, it was like 100 degrees when we were driving through the day. Now it's like 85 degrees. So maybe the turbocharger is breathing a little bit better. It's not sucking in super, super hot air. Uh, but the fuel economy has stayed pretty consistent in the 40s. So now we're at 40.6. Um, I will take the camera from you, honey. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so here is the fuel economy right here. It is 40.6, so that's what we've been getting. And having driven about 576 miles, I think it's safe to say that this is definitely a 40 mile per gallon plus vehicle. And that is extremely impressive for what this vehicle is. So anyways, uh, we're debating if we're gonna find a place to stay or if we're just gonna keep going another five hours to our destination. Uh, but we will let you know in the next clip. All right, everyone, so it is the next day we did decide to get a hotel overnight. So uh, just a place to rest our heads. We're actually here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it is a very rainy day today. So it's a good chance to test out the four motion all wheel drive system on the Arteon. Now, let me do a quick walk around because I've not had a chance to do that yet for you guys, but this is Urano Gray. It is a beautiful gray. It's definitely a lot darker. It's kind of hard to tell with this overcast, but it is an incredibly handsome vehicle. It really, really is. I think it was a proper replacement for the CC. And one thing you notice in person that you don't really tell from pictures or videos is that the front end is super low on this thing. So if I get right in front of it, it looks super mean, super aggressive, especially here in the rain. But the R-Line package does give it that meaner look. Uh, I love how the LEDs are integrated into these bars right here. And of course this has full LEDs, it has adaptive lighting, all that good stuff. And you are going to have a ton of functional aero going on down here. So you do have a functional vent over here off to the side. You guys can see that right there. And I really do love like the lines on the hood. It's super sharp. It almost looks like a angry shark. It's just got that real aggressive look to it. And coming around to the side, I love the side view of the hood. You can see just how low it dips. But coming down to the wheels, you are going to have these really interesting looking alloy wheels. Personally, I would prefer the 20s that you guys see on all of the videos, those big black 20 inch wheels. Now, I feel like that would have made the ride quality a little bit worse on this trip. These rode incredibly smooth, incredibly well. These Continentals did a great job. Uh, but yeah, personally, I think I would prefer it. I just think it would add some more presence to the vehicle, but then uh, that's completely everyone's specific choice. I just think that looks wise, it would be the best way for me to go. Then coming up to the side, you have this R-Line badge right here. You've got your mirrors. Down here, you have a little bit of chrome accenting, chrome accenting going around the windows. Then in the back quarter panel, I love this view of the vehicle. So if you guys don't know, the Arteon is going to be similar to like an A7 in terms of having the lift gate. So instead of just a traditional trunk, which is going to be just this part, this whole area will come up. So very easy, I'll show you guys how that works. You push this in right here, and that whole thing is going to lift up. Really, really cool. Tons of space in here. So we put all of our luggage in here, really good. So y'all can see that and brighten it up just a bit. There we go. So plit fit plenty of stuff in there and it looks pretty good. So did a great job. It's super deep. Here's the exact cubic feet on the screen. Y'all can check that out, but it doesn't have an automatic like a button or anything. So you just have to manually close it, which isn't that big of a deal. It is sort of heavy, which is unexpected for sure, but that's pretty much it for right now. I will show you all the interior a little bit later. Let's go ahead and get this thing back on the road though. So we can get to our destination. All right, so day two in the Volkswagen Arteon. Um, yes, I'm wearing the same thing as yesterday. 
It's been a long drive, don't judge me. Uh, however, I do want to say that when it comes to the MPG, there is one thing I've noticed. So the computer is so incredibly precise and you can tell that because when you have it on cruise control, which I've had it on cruise control, I've had it on eco mode, I've had the cruise control set to 75. So with traffic, obviously it'll stay behind the vehicle in front of me. So that means I was driving anywhere between, I think the slowest I was going was like 67 and the fastest was right at 75 when there are no vehicles in front of me. So with that being said, the computer really distributes fuel in such a precise way. When I take over and I start driving, it drops like two to three MPG. So with me driving as efficiently as I can, like just in normal comfort mode, uh, it says I'm getting 38.6, I believe. So there you have it. That's with human control. Uh, but if you have it on cruise control, letting the computer do the work, it's really impressive what it can do. So if you wanna get the best fuel economy, you know what to do now. Anyways, moving on, I do like all the visibility out of the car. The front is actually really low, so the, the hood drop off is so dramatic, it looks like the front of the dash is where the front of the car ends, if that makes sense. Uh, the visibility out of the mirrors is great. You do have your blind spot that is on the inside of the mirror, really helpful. Visibility out of the back is okay. It's not terrible, but because the headrests, all three of them are up, it does block a little bit of your visibility. Everything else is great though. Still rides just as smooth as it did yesterday, obviously, nothing changed there. Um, the suspension is adaptive, so it will slightly adjust. So if I throw it into sport mode, steering tightens up a little bit, throttle response is obviously a little bit better. The paddles are also some of the smallest paddles I've ever used in my life. They're so tiny, I think they're like this big. So that's pretty much it for driving impressions for right now. We're gonna keep on going, we're almost to our destination and I will get back with you guys whenever we head back. All right, so we actually have a beautiful sunny day today and I just got the car washed. So now you guys can get a better look at what the Urano Gray looks like. It looks beautiful. I'll get a little bit closer, you guys can get a good look at it. But man, this thing looks super sharp, especially from that side view here in the front. It is a mean, mean looking machine for sure. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the like Nardo Gray with Audi, but it's a little bit darker and it just has a really nice tone to it. It definitely is a looker for sure. But the big thing I want to do right now is show you guys what the interior of this vehicle looks like because it is absolutely stunning for sure. So let's go ahead and hop in. Very easy to get in. You do have touch sensitive areas on the door. So behind the handle, you have a touch sensitive area on the front. You're going to have a touch sensitive area. So if I hit this guy right here, it's going to lock it. Mirrors are going to fold in. Touchpad right behind here. Unlock it mirrors are going to fold down very cool all right so once the door is open first thing you're going to notice is that this is a true four-door coupe so what that means is you aren't going to have the top part come out with the door so as you guys can see it's just the window right there so that's what's going to give it that coupe like styling and i think it looks fantastic so if i get closer to the door you guys can hopefully see here that it's just all black so you have this all black leather interior you're going to have a decent amount of cubby space right here you have an area to pop the hatch right there though it's not going to fully open because it's not automatic all of your window controls and everything is going to be right here mirror controls window controls door locks door locks I'm sorry window locks down there door locks are going to be right up here you have a speaker there you have a speaker here and then you're going to have a speaker right down here then you have this interesting like aluminum piece right here so hopefully Y'all can see that very nice texture to it feels really good and then all this is going to be soft touch really high quality the leather is high quality but it's super firm it's like it doesn't even have any give to it that's how firm it is so that's either a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you are so coming down here you do have this r-line door sill looks really good it doesn't illuminate or anything like that unfortunately but it does look great during the day aluminum kick pedals you can have memory seats right down here. You can have three settings. Lumbar support right here, all of your seat controls there. Your leather is really good. You've got some stitching here. You've got some like gray piping coming along the sides and that's gonna go all the way up the seat of the car. And it's a good seat design. I mean, 
The seat bolsters are really nice, so I was very surprised, happily surprised to see that. Let's go ahead and hop in, we'll check out the rest. All right, so shutting the door on the Volkswagen Arteon. Nice solid shut. You have this cool graphic that comes up. Really nice. And start stop button is gonna be right down here, foot in the brake. And there you go. So, starting with the steering wheel, really nice steering wheel. I mean, it's the same steering wheel Volkswagen has used since like 2008. It is, I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I would just personally like to see a new steering wheel. This is one of those things where I say change just for the sake of change is probably a good thing because this is getting so long in the tooth, but there's no denying the fact that it is a really well thought out functional steering wheel. So you have your R badge right down here, some nice stitching there, you guys can see that. All smooth leather and of the highest quality I might like to add for you guys so it's super smooth it's like this real creamy feeling texture I know that's a weird word to use but I I mean it's seriously how it feels it's so buttery smooth it's crazy it's like it was conditioned with butter it was nuts so anyways coming over here you have all of your cruise control settings you guys can see that there you do have adaptive cruise volume settings Volkswagen symbol there in the middle and over to the right you have all of your media settings and if you can see there you have voice commands previous next and this is how you're going to control this screen so this is your virtual cockpit right here Volkswagen virtual cockpit it's not as intuitive and as um, high-end as the Audi version of course because it is Volkswagen but it's still real nice so I can click this view button right here and it'll take me through different views so if I want to go through here I can see like my economy my range my navigation it'll change the middle part for me which is super nice to see and then I can hit the left to scroll through what I want to see in the middle. So it's, it's really intuitive, very easy to use. You have your tack over to the left and then your speedometer over to the right. So really simplistic, I do like it. And for a full digital display, it is really easy to use for sure. Uh, you do have paddles back here. Like I mentioned earlier, they are the smallest paddles I've ever seen in my life. So you guys can see them there. They're absolutely tiny my, like two of my fingers can Three of my fingers can barely fit on them. You do have wipers right behind here. They are not going to be automatic, which is surprising. But then over here to the left, you're going to have your um, blinkers, and then of course you push forward and stuff for your high beams and things like that. Over to the left, you have automatic light settings. So if I brighten it up just a bit, you guys can see your automatic lights right behind there. And then you have this button right here, which is going to be for if it's raining or if it's foggy, it'll aim the lights slightly downwards. And that's really nice because uh, it'll make sure that the light's not bouncing off the fog and then it just doesn't do you any good when you're driving in that kind of condition. Uh, coming up, oh sorry, one more thing I want to say about the lights. The lights on here are super incredible at night, guys. I'm telling you, whenever you turn the vehicle on, it does this crazy dance where the lights are leveling and it makes this thing feel, feel like it's a robot or something. It is nuts. So y'all can see it working right here. It looks really, really cool. And I think that's one of the most satisfying things about starting this car up at night. It's just a really cool look. Really solid. So you guys can definitely hear that. You have a clock here, which I think should not be here. I think it really just breaks up this part for no reason. It'd be more satisfying to see the whole thing going all the way through. I think you could have easily got rid of this clock, got rid of these, and then somehow integrated it into that. I think that would have been a better way to go. Clock does look nice at night, though. I mean, it's got a nice glow to it, but it's nothing that really catches your eye here in the interior. I mean, you guys can see it's pretty simplistic in here. It's not too much going on. And um, yeah, I don't think the clock really adds much to that. You have more of that interesting material coming right here, your hazards right there. You've got your touchscreen, which is nice. It's very intuitive, pretty easy to use. Uh, you have Apple CarPlay on here. And then one cool thing is that it does sort of, it does anticipate your touch if that makes sense. So I want to see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about right here. Let's go back. Okay, so I'm going to pull my fingers away for just a second and you guys can see that this bottom part right here should go down just like it's doing right there. And let me get a little bit closer so you can see here. When I get close, it goes up. So it kind of anticipates that you're going to touch it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, most other Volkswagens do do that, so it's nothing super unique to the Arteon. It's just something I really like. Coming down here, you're going to have heated seats. You don't have cooled seats. You do have to go to the 
believe it's the SEL Premium. This is not the SEL Premium, surprisingly. So at forty-four thousand dollars, this is not fully loaded. You have to go one option or one trim level, trim level above this to get fully loaded, and that's putting you around forty-seven thousand dollars, which is a ton of money for this vehicle. But you do have, of course, automatic settings for your AC, max AC, normal stuff right there. You don't have a wireless charging pad or anything like that, so you are lacking in that department. But it is a nice space that does dip down so things aren't going to fly out when you accelerate. The traditional Volkswagen shifter right here. You guys all know this shifter. You all hate or love this shifter. It has been around for forever. And it is an 8-speed automatic. However, now it's not a dual clutch. It's just a traditional torque converted automatic. You can shift right up here or you can use the paddles I, show, I showed you guys earlier on the steering wheel. Throw it into reverse, you have a backup camera, not 360, you do have to go up to the premium to get the 360 camera. And that will also include like cooled seats and different things like that. Different drive modes right here. So if I select that, you can see all your drive modes I talked about with you guys earlier. Right below that you have your automatic start stop, of course your start stop button right here. So this is just going to be for when you're sitting in traffic. It'll cut the engine and turn it back on when you let off the brake. Most people hate it. I'm one of those people, but some people love it. And it I'm sure it does something with their fuel. I haven't seen a ton of use in terms of it giving me real world benefits in fuel economy, but I guess it all depends on how you drive. USB port over here. You can use that for Apple CarPlay. You are going to have um, some cup holders right here. Electronic parking brake. Little bit of space there maybe you can put a key there 12 volt uh, armrest is pretty nice lift that up you're going to have another usb right in there a little bit of storage space not too deep i mean like my arm can fit in there decently well but it's not crazy deep it is lined in felt however so it's not gonna make a ton of noise when things rattle around you are going to have lockable glove box here as you come up you have an automatic dimming mirror and it is a beautiful frameless design as y'all can see right there as you come up you're gonna have a sunglass holder you can have LED lights in here and then going to have your moonroof there which is really well tinted you can see those beautiful clouds right there and it's gonna be like a mesh so you can still sort of see through it as you guys can see there LED light right up here Everything does have a super solid feel to it, but that's pretty much it for the front. Let's go ahead and check out the back. All right, sitting in the back of the Volkswagen Arteon, I actually have a decent amount of room. So if I get comfortable right here, um, my hair is touching and I don't have any room above, above my hair, but I am six feet tall. So the fact that I can fit back here is actually pretty impressive. Now shutting the door on this, super solid shut. I mean, you guys can probably hear that from there. It's super solid. And I mean, that just comes with it being a German vehicle. Now. Once again, I know they don't have the best reliability quality, but the build quality here is almost on par with like an Audi. It's so, so good. It's really impressive. Um, now, the other thing to note is because you have that slant, that does cut into your headroom a bit. So I would have a little bit more headroom if it weren't for this dramatic slant right here in the back. It looks great from the outside, but it does take away from headroom on the inside. So if you're above six feet tall, let's say 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", you are going to have a little bit of an issue with your head scraping, but it's not so big of an issue to where it's not gonna be solved by me just slouching in the chair. So there is that. Um, the seat is set to my driving position and I have about a good three and a half to four inches of knee room right here. My feet room can slide underneath very easily, so that's not an issue at all. You have a little 12 volt back here, though you don't have any USB ports. You have some vents here two map pockets right behind here, full LED lights right back here. And the seats are very interesting. They actually have bolsters on them. They're very small, but they do sort of hold you in place pretty well, which um, a lot of vehicles don't bother to do in the back seat. So it is sort of nice to see that. You fold this middle armrest down, you have two cup holders, and then you have a pass through. So if I pull this, you can pass something long here through the middle, which is great if you have something that requires that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for the back seat. You got a little grab handle here if the driver's driving pretty crazy or if you just need something to help keep you stable, you get car sick really easily. And then you have hooks here, hooks here, there, and there to put dry cleaning and things like that on. But other than that, um, it's pretty much it for the back seat. We've already seen the trunk space. Let's go ahead and see what's under the hood. All right, so now coming under the hood of the Volkswagen Arteon, 
you're gonna have the same engine from the Volkswagen Golf GTI and the Volkswagen Golf R. So it's the same two liter four cylinder turbo, but this one's gonna be tuned differently. As a matter of fact, the American version, which, what, which is what we have here, is gonna be tuned differently than even the Europe specification. So in Europe, they're gonna make about 276 horsepower. This one's gonna make 268 horsepower, but it's gonna make the same 258 pound-feet of torque as they do in the top level specification over in Europe. Uh, the biggest difference here is going to be the transmission. So over in Europe you're going to have a 7-speed DSG that's going to come with this application. Here in North America we're going to have the 8-speed automatic non-dual clutch. So it is just a torque converted automatic. However, as you guys have already seen, it still shifts very quickly. It's just the downshifts aren't going to be as crisp and as fast as a dual clutch. Uh, just because of the fact it's a traditional torque converted automatic, it just can't be that quick on the downshift. Upshifts are almost just as quick as the DSG. It's very, very impressive. Um, now, because of that, uh, you do get a little bit better fuel economy. So here are the fuel economy specs. So as you guys already know, it is extremely underrated from what you're actually going to see in real life. That's probably some of the most underrated fuel economy specs I've ever seen. Uh, and once again, this is all wheel drive. You can get this in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. We have the four motion all wheel drive here in this version of the Arteon. Uh, now, the other thing to note is that the turbocharger on here, you can actually see it here in the back. I'll show you guys a little bit of B-roll so you can see it. Um, but it's right here, it's super visible. And so when you're driving this, you can actually hear it sort of whistling if you have all the music down and you're just cruising along with no noise, you can hear the turbo spooling up and it's really, really cool. Uh, so I do love that about this engine. Same thing with the Golf R, same thing with the GTI. If you're quiet enough, you can really hear that turbocharger working. But let's go ahead and do just a little bit more driving in this thing. We're gonna drive around town and uh, then we're gonna head on back to Texas. All right, everyone, change of plan. So the day I was going to drive around town was actually the day we were driving back home. We got on the road a little bit early because there was a big storm that was coming through, but this was a good opportunity for me to drive in the rain. The car did incredibly well, very, very stable. Uh, I didn't feel nervous at all, so it was very confidence inspiring, and I really did enjoy that. But anyways, I'm back home here in Texas now. We've officially driven the vehicle over 2,300 miles, which is pretty crazy. Uh, so I'm just gonna drive here around town, around roads that I know. We're gonna we're gonna chop it up just a little bit, and I'm gonna see what the Arteon is capable of. Well everyone, that's gonna wrap up my review of the Volkswagen Arteon. This was a seriously impressive sedan by Volkswagen. It feels every single bit like it's Audi A7 cousin and you can guarantee that if you take this on a long trip, you are going to be very, very comfortable. Though the road noise is a little bit higher than I expected in that sort of vehicle, it rides very smooth, it's incredibly comfortable, and of course, the MPG is simply out of this world for a turbocharged four-cylinder sedan of that size that's also all-wheel drive. Very well done, Volkswagen. However, my only downside would be the price. At $44,000 as tested, this was not even fully loaded, which would set you back somewhere in between $47,000 and $48,000, and that is a lot of money for a Volkswagen sedan. Comment below, let me know what you think of the Arteon. Would you pay that much money for this vehicle? If so, let me know why, and if not, let me know why not as well. But either way, I hope you all enjoyed this review. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I know a lot of you guys are watching this video and you have not heard of my channel or even subscribed, so just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I just wanna say thank you guys so much for helping me hit 50, thousand subscribers i'm super excited about this great milestone and i came out with shirts specifically for this so be sure to check out the link underneath this video 
I have my 50K subscriber shirt. You guys can see it right here on the screen. Very happy to have this. So be sure to get it if you guys want to support and represent Forest Auto Reviews. Thank you guys so much, and I will see y'all in the next review. Y'all take care. Bye.